so so today our session is about social media and healthcare and i am very interested to know so like social media has become an inextricable part of our lives especially so in the lives of our students so would you please help us to better understand how we can use this vast amount of resource to better our studying and our medical education and understanding certainly i'll do that thank you for the introduction and at the outset i thank uh, dr kishan rao for this uh, opportunity asking me to speak to uh, the white army members and uh, i know I, i know kishan for quite a while now and is a person uh, doing a wonderful work in the field of medical education and i'm sure uh, he's helping all the uh, white army participants in more uh, ways than one now uh, uh, my uh, topic for the day is social media and study mania is an interesting uh, title but i thought i'll give a broad introduction of how social media is helping <clears throat> doctors especially doctors in training and also to some extent patients now uh, the only thing that is constant is change so uh you have to learn and embrace change i mean i'll start with that quotation and uh, uh, dr william kelly uh, uh, who addressed the the society of laparoscopic and endoscopic surgeons in 2008 by the way i'm uh, speaking from bangalore i'd come here for a robotic conference and i'm speaking from a hotel room so the audio video may not be optimal you kindly pardon me for this but some i could uh, scramble to reach my room by this time through the traffic uh, again sorry uh, for that uh, inconvenience but uh, i'll do i'll try to do justice to the topic given to me and uh, this famous uh, surgeon said when uh, a laparoscopy is getting introduced into surgery about uh, 20 years ago he said that there's a season for any change and there's a reason for any change i'll try explain to you in detail as we go by actually uh, technology uh, in itself exists for an indefinite period of time before it is finally adopted by the masses at quick speed and uh, to illustrate antiseptic hand washing uh, by ignat flob semilovis um, decades ago when he started doing it everybody uh, made fun of him he thought uh, that uh, Uh, he's insane and this concept is rather funny but it didn't take much time before it got accepted likewise staplers in gastrointestinal surgery they also are not very old they've been a recent phenomenon but when staplers are being used initially in surgery many people made fun of them but then of course stapling is a part of our a routine surgical exercise now likewise even laparoscopy when it came people didn't believe that it is a possibility and a feasibility but then you know now it's uh, it's uh, laparoscopy is the gold standard likewise organ transplantation the first heart the first kidney and the liver are transplanted uh, people were uh, they're made mockery of but then these all standards likewise even social media is something which was uh, Uh, a thing of imagination a few years ago but now it's become a reality now if you have seen the way the digital universe has grown from 2009 to 2020 it's mind boggling now not uh, just it has changed the world in all spheres it's also changed in the way of medical education there was a time when we were students the um teaching of anatomy was like the one you see to the left now it is changed now it's all modern you have uh, a very good devices from which you learn from and uh, that's how it to the right this is how the medicine is taught these days now and uh, this is a lot more uh, in detail and uh, in many of these pictures can be reproduced easily saved and uh, there are software like this uh, like the virtual anatomy tutors available in a few places in india is just like a human body but then you can choose the group of muscles uh, exclusively their arterial supply their nerve supply in three dimension you can cut them in coronal section and now here we are dealing with a uh, human body without that uh, smell and uh, 
uh, discomfort and uh, this is how uh, the digital world has uh, come into medical teaching now now social media uh, it, it refers to a technology that allows users to connect in re real or delayed time without geographic boundary or limitations now this has uh, shrunk the world and connected uh, uh, people all over because i remember the days when we have to uh, look up some um, medical information we had to go to the library before it gets closed then you had to look up a big voluminous book called index medicus and from there it's during my time actually we had to take up some information go look for the old journals to the uh, library the dusted uh, um, books and old bound journals and uh, sort out and get some information it's not that anymore it is just at the fingertips not just that uh, any journal you can uh, open up and see for that matter any conference that's happening in one corner of the world can be seen in timbuktu real time you know this is the thing uh, the digital world has uh, uh, influenced uh, learning all over now what is social media social media is something which is having conversations it is making connections is building relationships sharing resources networking collaborate in other words social media is the platform where connection conversation and collaboration takes place now in 2021 what happens in a minute in internet you see <laughs> there are 1.4 million per scrolling the facebook 21 million texts are sent in just one internet minute 500 hours of uh, youtube content is uploaded you know if you look into all other parameters about 69 million messages are sent and whatsapp actually that was in 2021 and this moment i think the numbers would have increased considerably so much is happening so much is happening and we also are a part of the happening and we also contribute we also get involved in this social media activity now if you see the social media users around the world it it's, it runs into million for example total number of active social media users are 4.55 billion and uh, as uh, social media users is percentage of global population almost more than 50% of the world population is social media and then annual increase in the numbers is about 9.9% uh, to the range of 409 million and average time spent per day using social media is 2 hours 27 minutes and average number of platforms used by each month by internet is 6.7 these figures are mind boggling effectively every second a human being on earth is into social media so if you need to reach him or he has to reach you you should be on the social media and this is where everything is happening there were times when only get used to get news from newspapers and uh, you know it's only one one sided thing you can only read you can't transmit you can't respond but now everything is changed you will be surprised you know 100% of the 18 to 29 year olds in the united states use internet if you see the age group 100% of and actually even 65 age group about almost 75% uh, in people in the united states use, use internet and uh, in india india is not far behind in the usage of internet uh, happily enough if you see in the total population of india uh is about 1.2 billion now almost uh, half or uh, about 36% use internet and social media usage by about 20% and then um active mobile social media users about 16% and this number keeps increasing goes to say that india is not far behind although it's not as much as the united states but social media usage is very high in india as well india is the second largest country of after china and about 227 million live in rural india and equal number live in urban india and 71 million kids between 5 and 11 go online using adult devices in in india you see the age distribution <coughs> 
and gender distribution you see a uh, percentage of males using is more than the females and uh, 20 to 29 age group is the one it's from the big chunk of social media in india now the lockdown that happened in the last two years and uh, thanks to uh, covid virus has changed all these things tremendously schooling education of any nature for that matter even work is from home or computers but that when computers came in social media came and actually we didn't know what zoom is about two years ago but there's now there's no one who does not have a zoom account and that has made us uh, social media savvy so much in the recent past now twitter facebook linkedin youtube they're all social media platforms uh, all of us are aware of and most of us use uh, almost all these platforms insta telegram of course now uh, linkedin is for people uh, who uh, are professionals and who want their professional um, upgrading and their achievements to be known to the potential headhunters and youtube of course is a universal thing for everyone and youtube is used to uh, uh, learn cooking as to how to make a new dish or how to uh, repair your television or how to buy a new uh, mobile phone how to in addition to all that everything to do with medicine and surgeries on the youtube for that matter most of the medical education these days self taught is on the youtube telegram is another one which we being used then of course facebook is the ubiquitous one but now facebook has become more of a media for the slightly elderly you know instagram is the in thing where youngsters flock to and here also in addition to many other uh, things even medicine is also learned and taught twitter the twitter uh, social media got launched in 2006 and now you will see that india is is in third position as far twitter usage is concerned because twitter usage has something to do with the proficiency in english language and that's where we are slightly behind than the other countries but when it come to other uh, platforms like facebook and youtube then i'll come to the statistics later we are much ahead of our ahead of everybody else now the early adopters of medical profession who came to twitter uh, called themselves uh, physicians at twitter because they didn't want to be recognized by any speciality because they are worried that uh, since there is no peer review of whatever is written in twitter by medical personnel there is threat to professional because uh, medicine has got lots to do with privacy so there was a threat to professionalism because even a post is put to, on twitter and is deleted if already viewed shared or reposted it still remains in the internet the statement will persist so even if you post a uh, uh, post in twitter for a short while and take it out it still remains there so this was the early worry for people especially medical professionals who got into the social media called twitter and they were very hesitantly getting in and uh, the early surgeon tweeters again they came from a multidisciplinary environment and then they started uh, with users name like kidney boy whole page they didn't really take their name up because they are little worried about the privacy and then they are also worried about the reprimand from their parent organizations one of the first surgeon bloggers was a plastic surgeon called ramona bates and she started her blog sutured for a living in 2007 and the blog is still on she's uh, ramona bates and then slowly organizations that came on to twitter included association of women surgeons association of academic surgery association for plastic surgeons association for colorectal surgeons and slowly patient doctor groups came in because they understood that it's very easy to communicate across continents with the people sharing the same concerns with the doctors and uh, patients and others healthcare workers focusing on a certain disease and that helped these patients as well as the caregivers tremendously 
to improve uh, treatment outcomes. Now, another example is obesity social media that started uh, in 2016 and that all brought uh, people who are interested in bariatric surgery together. Now, Twitter has gone a few steps ahead. Now there is something called Twitter Connect, tweet chats and hashtags, and then uh, Twitter-based journal clubs. Twitter has every medical journal of repute in the world has a Twitter handle. And if you go into the Twitter handle and see, you get the, uh, the um, uh, table of contents and you will also have abstracts and you know uh, um, what is happening or what is to look for in a journal that is got just got released. It, it's unfortunate that the Indian population don't go so much into Twitter as they do with uh, Facebook and Instagram, but Twitter has got a lot of stuff, especially for surgical uh, uh, trainees, not just surgical trainees, all medical personnel. There is so much, so much uh, material available in uh, on Twitter. And of course, Twitter in conferences, because there are uh, people who tweet from conferences as they happen. There's a conference, there's a lecture just finished and somebody will tweet the summary of that conference and at the end of the day, the whole summary of the day is uh, tweeted. So without even attending a conference somewhere in New Jersey, somebody from Sri Lanka can have an idea of what is happening just by uh, logging onto this Twitter account. Now, the other media I want to talk about is Facebook. And if you look at the Facebook penetration, and it is about 63% as compared to Twitter and Instagram. Now, India leads, India leads the world in the number of Facebook users. Actually, it's more than United States itself. The Facebook is more of a visual thing. Of course, most Indians use for domestic and private messaging and sharing happy moments, birthdays, parties, this, that, and other, or you know, putting up their wedding pictures, birthday pictures, and so on. And uh, Indians took to Facebook like fish to water, and that's where India stands now. Surgeons have been reluctant because it is uh, anything to do with surgery, you need to put in uh, an internet uh, space means you are applying, uh, uh, you need to apply professionalism to online communication. And whenever anything about any patient, any disease is shared on a public platform, there will be some sort of disregard to patient privacy. And uh, there is obviously some unprofessional content that comes in in this media and that happens, it will reflect poorly on the entire profession. And actually there are multiple examples of that. So integrity, accountability, and the continued pursuit of excellence can be blurred in the anonymity of the internet because anybody can write anything, uh, anybody can criticize it, any other doctor or surgeon or a particular operation or whatever without being uh, seen or heard by anybody. The anonymity gives a lot of protection and that can make uh, uh, you know some uh, medical professionals uh, behave improperly online. So these are all the worries about uh, Facebook uh, while it's used in public. Now, privacy settings, of course, have come in now where we can only have select audience. We can choose who you can who can see your postings and we have groups where some security uh, links attached. Now, Facebook allows users to adjust who may have access to their post in images, but reposting can occur. Somebody can post your post to another group where you have no control, but that possible is always there. But Facebook has become a lot safer than what it started in the beginning. Now, learning from others' experience is an important aspect of professional development surgery, and I'm sure White Army it takes this principle very seriously. Now, field of surgery has grown tremendously both in the number of surgeons and their dispersion across countries. And now we need to rely less on conferences to stay up to date. We need not uh, travel long distances, spend a lot of money and time to reach um, places where things are happening. We can learn all that just online. So we can stay up to date and also learn new techniques or practices. 
Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms emerge as powerful tools for keeping surgeons connected. Now, Facebook started uh, uh, initially one of the Facebook started in 2014, not very long ago. It's about uh, eight years now. Uh, you know, I'm sure uh, most of you are uh, you just joined MBBS or just finished or whatever. So it is a very recent phenomenon. And one of the early surgical groups on Facebook is the International Hernia Collaboration, founded by Brian Jacob. Subsequently, they set another group called Robotic Surgery Collaboration, was founded by Yusuf Kudsi. He allowed surgeons uh, to share cases, difficult cases, exchange questions and experiences regarding particular techniques or practice. Actually, today I am in Bangalore attending one of those robotic. I do robotic surgery almost every day for the last about couple of months. And I have special interest in this area. You need to log on to the robotic surgery collaboration to see how what sort of interaction that happens. Large memberships and generated numerous online discussions every day among practicing surgeons worldwide, these two platforms. And that has uh, improved surgical knowledge immensely without get, getting out of one's office or home and uh, learn from others, learn from others all over that matter. Many, many youngsters get connected to some of the best known surgeons worldwide just without any introduction and they get whatever information they want. If we have come to such a stage that if you are not on Facebook, you don't exist. As quoted by one unknown medical student, what is my foray into social media? The reason why I was called in to speak in this particular uh, forum is my association social media. And my getting introduced to Dr. Krishan Rao is also through my uh, association with this particular medium. Uh, actually, in truth, I've been in a... I'm a GI surgeon with reasonable training. And in 2014, till 2014, I worked in one of the biggest corporate hospitals in India for over 14 years. And 2014, I changed jobs from one hospital to another. And I had lots of free time in the beginning. I casually started a Facebook page called Learning General Surgery. And then uh, because to get people into it, I need to have friends. I can only drag my Facebook friends and put them here. So I started making more and more friends. Then at some point, I understood that you can't make more than 500 friends in FP. So I, I used to bring them in and I had to write some stories and then I dragged into learning general surgery. Slowly, the numbers increased. The limit of uh, Facebook friendship is only about 5,000. I don't know. I think it still is 5,000. I used to write about stories about my internship, my surgical residency, the troubles and the travails I went through. And that sounded familiar to many of the readers. And they started identifying themselves with my writings. At that point of time, about 60 to 70 members used to join this Facebook page, Learning General Surgery. And uh, I got in touch with uh, some uh, very renowned people called Dr. Giriyad Sharma, Dr. Vishnuad Reddy, I mean, they started writing to this format uh, regularly. And then actually, I didn't realize that if you put pictures of uh, breasts or scrotum or bottom, the Facebook has got artificial intelligence by which I identify this as pornography. I had three warnings from Facebook when I shared these pictures. And these are shared for medical purposes. Then I've been blocked from Facebook permanently. So my initial writings about three years are completely gone. So I had to start another account. At that time, uh, the learning general surgery, Dr. Giriya Sharma was one of the admin. I requested him to make me admin once again, and then I came back into the Facebook. So my initial uh, writings and the material of Facebook of over three years is completely gone. Now then I continued writing again and po started posting original case reports. Again, membership grew rapidly. By some quirky thing, I converted Learning General Surgery to a secret group. There's one concept called secret. And then when after going to secret, this Learning General Surgery will not be seen on uh, Google. So actually membership, only a member only can add and uh, nobody can uh, look for membership. That's when the membership numbers came down. Only about six months ago, uh, it, it, there was a window of opportunity where I can connect, 
change secret to closed group where then more people could enter. For a long period of time, uh, LGS remained a secret group, so not many could enter. Now, Learning General Surgery has got members from all surgical specialties, interesting enough. Today, I came to a robotic conference. It's actually, it's done for urologists because I use the same robo for my procedures. So I thought I'll see what the urologists are doing. And interestingly enough, a couple of urologists could recognize me as so-and-so who runs learning general surgery. So that is the power of uh, the social media. So in 2015, I had the first meeting of learning general surgery members in Chennai. And uh, stalwarts like Dr. Samar and Nandi, my boss, attended as faculty. And that was a good conference with novel themes for panel discussions. And I was really uh, taken aback when uh, Dr. Nandi commented that the best conference he's ever attended. He had wanted similar conferences to be conducted elsewhere. And then we planned for Learn From Legends in 2020 when the COVID came. And uh, that is Dr. Uh, Samar and Nandi, my mentor. And that was the meeting that was held in Chennai. And these are all the uh, people who are behind the meeting. And this is Dr. Girija Sharma, who is all a co-admin in learning general surgery. And he's another gentleman who's, who's passionate about teaching. And he very strongly believes that, you know, surgery is uh, something which you shouldn't uh, um, hold. You shouldn't keep it with yourself. You should surgical knowledge you should spread to as many people and as quickly as possible. And learning general surgery is one such platform. Now, the present membership is about 41,000. It increases daily. The activity every minute on the, there's some activity every minute on the page. There are about 40, 50 new posts every day. Original case reports, extensive case discussions with eminent surgeons. It has large number of surgeons from neighboring countries. Uh, and we do have live lectures on Facebook Live. Lectures. Actually, during the um, pandemic, we were having about six to eight lectures every single day with the attendance of 300 and above because there's the time everybody is at home and uh, they had access to internet. They didn't have any access to the rest of the world. And uh, that's how uh, we could, uh, um, for about uh, uh, two years, we could... Uh, uh, put up a lot of academic material on Facebook. There was this tremendous member participation and cordial discussions. Actually, we too, me and uh, Dr. Girija Sharma are the two admins who monitor what is posted in learning general surgery. And we constantly keep track of any unsavory discussion. If there is any comment or any discussion which is not very parliamentary, immediately Feel that it will be blocked or deleted. And we have so many members who have been blocked because of uh, irrational behavior. Now, uh, non-doctors are not given access to this uh, um, medium because uh, we don't want anything uh, to leak out because a lot of medical stuff, uh, private stuff is discussed in here. We don't encourage advertisements or announcements or with a commercial angle. And of course, there's... Uh, no money involved, nothing is charged from anyone for anything. It, this made way for new friendships and, uh, and Christian Rob become a friend through this medium. And then, you know, <coughs> uh, it, been a, and actually I, we had met in Tripura once and uh, that was a wonderful meeting. And uh, I'm sure the Learning General Surgery would have given uh, Kishan some uh, idea to how to take social media forward in medical teaching. And this is tremendous learning for everyone, especially me. Actually, I made thousands of friends, I should tell you, thousands of friends. But for LGS, I wouldn't have known many, and many wouldn't have known me. Now we added the LGS WhatsApp, Telegram, and so on. And this is how the medium looks like. And this is how the membership keeps increasing. And, uh, you know, this is how the posts, some posts we decline and, uh, you know, some Post we block, and these are the popular days um, and popular timing, as you see. Wednesdays are the ones um, we actually put. So, taking cue from this, we try to do things on these days to have maximum attendance. We have uh, members from all over and in so many different countries, different cities. Now, we have done <coughs> some more academic, intense academic activity 
like let us learn together we did a laparoscopic colostectomy uh, workshop like thing and i i strongly believe that uh, any of this meeting should be different in the way that we all have to face each other it should be a round table meeting and there'll be round table discussion it's not that somebody lectures and the rest all listen that way the take home subject will be very minimal only when everybody is involved and everybody has a voice you know this uh, surgical subjects can be learned better so that's how uh, the um, let us learn surgery thing look like and of course uh, i had had uh, opportunity to interview many stalwarts in surgery many of them my teachers and professors and we have a youtube channel in which all these uh, interviews are available आदर्श सर हम राइट सर पट्ट सर सो सोशल मीडिया हाउ वॉज इट यूज इन हेल्थ केयर यू नो फॉर हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल टूल्स टू शेयर इंफॉर्मेशन एंड टू डिबेट हेल्थ केयर पॉलिसीज टू प्रमोट हेल्थ बिहेवियर्स Uh, you know interact with patient actually the the opportunity the feasibility is tremendous it's just we have to sit and think uh, how best we can use actually this is not used optimally as yet i wonder see when uh, kishan does uh, white army i'm sure that should be in the syllabus of uh, every medical school actually the uh, the institution head should talk to him and uh, uh ask him to make some modules for these colleges and schools uh, and um, this tremendous improvement not not just because uh, there's so much material so many important faculty are because how will a, a, a student in guwahati listen to a professor from chennai or how can a student from chennai uh, listen to a professor surgery in uh, shillong you know it's 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 all uh, feasible through this particular media so this should be made use of see this is uh, made use in medical education patient education and collaboration among healthcare teams consultation among curated therapeutic forums health care campaigns patient to patient dialogue so um if you see this who on social media who is there in every uh, social media you can think of and there is a lot of information there so effectively uh someone asked me uh about uh, medicine in social media during one of my recent lectures i said do you think the younger uh, medicos and the generation uh, watch um, medicine or read medicine from social media and i wrote actually recently one story about one girl who came with this <coughs> with her mother to see me i think that must be a month ago and uh, she seen me a year earlier and uh, she want badly wanted to join medicine and she got qualified to join somewhere in a medical college in tirchi then she said uh, i asked um, uh, by you travel from home to the college it will take about one and a half hours so you travel one and a half hours up and one and a half hours down how do you use social media she says i closely follow instagram i follow deepika padukone i follow kriti sanon and somebody somebody then i said uh, what else do you do you, I, i watch movies then you know i chat with my friends and we discuss latest movies then i wondered uh, uh, to the the question somebody asked me as to what the younger generation use social media for actually this is what most people use social media for um the youngsters do not understand that there is also 
a lot of medical and surgical learning through social media every social media including twitter facebook instagram and so on and that is a sad part of it because many are not aware that uh, uh, these uh, platforms exist and there are many many uh, people interested in educating others work hard to get this uh, media together but then i have uh, one um, thing of uh, caution that medicine is not just learned uh, from social media medicine has to be learned from patients by seeing patients by talking to patients and uh, by touching them and uh, feeling them these are all very very important because unless until uh, you dirty your hands or you um, dirty your feet and uh, uh, walking through hospital corridors you're not going to learn medicine uh if the prime thing is that you have to spend definitely a lot of time in uh the hospital corridors and operation theater to learn medicine but you should also allocate a certain amount of time an hour or two as a rule either in the morning or in the evening to look into what is available in social media definitely everyone every single uh, medical student or a trainee uses mobile phone to look into whatsapp and instagram and youtube of course most times they may be using these social media to look up uh, things of entertainment and fashion and movies but i think you have to allocate certain definitive time to look into twitter on medicine facebook on medicine insta on medicine as well and if you do it as a regular uh, habit and addition to what you learn in the hospitals you will go a long way in learning quality medicine surgery surgeons in summary surgeons have taken to social media in a very big way facebook twitter whatsapp linkedin youtube are all surgeons tools in medicine now this social media has shrunk the world and blurred time zones and it's got immense possibilities actually the possibilities are unlimited it's all that somebody should take up uh, um these things seriously and uh, spend time in arranging uh, uh, material for the betterment of uh, medical students of course we also need to follow a set of rules regulations and safeguard privacy when we are discussing medicine and patient material to me learning general surgery is a huge revelation lucky that i am born in an era where social media is available and i also had an opportunity to contribute a little bit to the social media learning and uh, thank you so much for your attention and especially thanks kishan for this opportunity